Hi there, welcome to Hoberic Bull Sessions. I'm Ulf, and today I'm going to show you how I came up with my own model of uh, ribbon microphones. As I said, I'm going to show you how I came up with my own uh, model of ribbon microphones called the Hoberic HR1. Uh, I got a couple of requests on uh, showing how I made those because I talked about them in a few of my videos. A standard ribbon microphone is a pretty simple um, technical construction. It's basically just a ribbon pickup motor and a transformer and an XLR connector and then you have to put it in something to make it look nice. This is what my finished ribbon motor looks like and now I'm gonna show you how I made it. First I made a frame like this on a laser cutting machine and uh, I need two identical pieces like this for one ribbon motor and this is used to fit everything together. As you can see here I made a little stop in uh, both the short ends to prevent the magnets from uh, slamming together. I used a pair of neodymium block magnets from K&J Magnetics. Um, they are really strong and they are rated N42. Uh, so. Be really careful because uh, they can hurt your fingers and they also break really easily. So here I put some glue on it and then I fit it into the sockets of the plastic frame. Next I put some uh, copper tape to make an electrical connection for the aluminum ribbon and also wrap it around the corner so I have something to solder the cables to later. Just make sure it doesn't touch the magnets. Then I'm gonna put four screws into the holes of the frame. I put some glue on it uh, after I almost put it all the way through. This will help to make it a lot easier later when I'm gonna put the nuts on it. Be careful when you put the screws in because the magnets, as I said, are really strong so they will attract everything made out of metal. Make sure the screws are straight while drying the glue because the magnets might make them slant. Next step is to make the ribbon itself and I'm gonna show you here the piece of aluminum foil I use for this. Uh, it's really really thin, it's 2.5 micron. I usually get my aluminum foil on eBay from uh, PF Sonics. So now I'm gonna show you how I work with this. As you can see here, I just drench it in isopropyl alcohol. This will help uh, keep the paper and the aluminum foil stick together while working with it and also keep it clean and uh, lubricated. Then you want to roll it under something that is uh, round and heavy. What I use here is maybe not perfect but it works. I do this to flatten out the uh, aluminum foil and really squeeze the material together. I've heard some people say that it makes it more uh, durable. I use a metal ruler and a scalpel to cut stripes of the aluminum foil. First I just cut one end of the sheet off to make sure that that end is really straight. And then I have my little homemade tool made out of plastic and tape that has the exact width that I need out of my stripes. So you can make one of those and uh, fit them between the, um, the magnets to make sure that it's supposed to be as uh, wide as possible but you should be able to work with it and it shouldn't uh, touch the magnets uh, at either end. So I just use it to measure and then I cut uh, a bunch of stripes. You should cut a bunch of them right away because uh, you're probably gonna mess up the next step a couple of times before you get used to it. The next step is to corrugate the stripes and uh, I've seen people use all different kind of items to do this. Uh, everything from cigarette paper corrugators and plastic gears and cogs and whatnot. Um, I actually made my own pair of cogs. I made a bunch of different of these and tried it out and uh, to find out which one I thought made the ribbon to sound the way I wanted to. You probably still want to keep the thin protection paper on the aluminum foil. Once again you should uh, drench it in uh, isopropyl alcohol to make it stick together and keep it lubricated. To keep it from cracking and breaking and stuff like that. So carefully run it through your corrugation tool of choice. Uh, as you see here I kind of run it a little bit back and forth to really make sure that it's corrugated and uh, nicely done. Uh, after you made a few just put it aside and uh, let it dry so the protection paper 
loses itself from the aluminum foil. You don't want to pull it apart because then you're going to destroy the corrugation. Now it's time to fit the ribbon in the motor and I've seen a bunch of different techniques for this but the way I find it easiest is to fit the ribbon between two clothespins. And be careful because it's really fragile. Also make sure that the copper tape areas are clean. If it's not, you can clean it with some isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. Then I make the copper tape areas wet with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, make sure it's really wet. This will help to keep the, the ribbon in place and uh, keep it from moving around too much. It's important to get the tension right, uh, which can be hard. Just make sure that it doesn't slack and also make sure that you don't straighten out the corrugation. Um, so somewhere in between there should be alright. It should not slack and it should not be straight. I use a q-tip to stick the ribbon to the wet uh, copper tape. Then I secure everything with the second plastic frame. Sometimes I think it's easier to take the clothespins away first because the isopropyl wet uh, copper area will hold the ribbon in place anyway. At least for a little while because the isopropyl dries up really quick. Make sure it's nice and tight and uh, put the nuts on the four screws. At one end of the motor you want to solder two cables. Uh, here I already soldered them together before. Those cables will later go around the motor. At the other end just solder one cable. When it's done it should look something like this. I thought about a lot of different options for a microphone body and uh, I came up with the idea to put it in the aluminum box you usually use for guitar pedals. Since there are a hell of a lot of holes to drill in this, I made a template. First I drill all the holes with a 1.5 or 2mm drill and then I went through it all again with a 5.5mm drill. I made a hole in the side to fit the mounting bracket and I also used a threading tool to fit a screw in here. This is the mounting bracket. I first planned to do it out of brass material, which looked really cool, but I never managed to do it in a proper angle without breaking it, so I got help from a company to make those out of aluminum and then I just sprayed it with copper paint. So make a hole here to fit the screw through. I made a hole here at the bottom and also here I used a threading tool to be able to fit it to a microphone stand. At the bottom of the aluminum box I made three holes, which of one is 20 millimeters, and I used uh, a step drill to do this. And also make those two small holes to fit an XLR connector. To hold the ribbon motor in place inside the aluminum box I made some stripes out of uh, a thin camping mattress and glued some pieces together. It should look something like this. Also act a little bit like a shock mount and prevent uh, resonance to appear inside the aluminum box. I also made proper sized holes uh, through one layer of the double layered parts. Uh, this is to hold the microphone motor in place. I made a cut halfway through uh, the lower piece. Uh, this is to fit the cable through. Mount the motor and wrap it up in a piece of uh, nylon sock to keep it safe. Solder pin 1 on the XLR connector with the extra little metal piece to connect the body of the microphone to the shield. Then it's time to solder the transformer. I use a Swedish brand called Lundal and the model is called LL2912 and are specially made for ribbon microphones. On this one the thin white cable is uh, the positive side so you should solder that one to pin number 2 on the XLR connector and the thin black cable should be soldered to pin number 3. I cut two small pieces of shrinking tube which I put on the cables coming from the ribbon motor. Then solder the ribbon motor and the transformer together. It doesn't matter really which cable goes to which cable here. Uh, if you're not satisfied with the polarity outcome, you can just flip the motor over. Ignore the fact that I don't have my motor mounted in the sleeping mattress uh, frame here. You should definitely have that to protect your ribbon motor. I usually shrink my shrink tubes with the tip of my soldering iron. Here I put a piece of brass net inside the microphone body. Then I carefully put the mounted ribbon motor in place. 
I don't want to transform it to be all loose inside the microphone body, so I put some uh, plastic packing material in here and then I carefully fold the cables down. I put another piece of brass nut in the aluminum lid. Carefully put the lid on the box and uh, tighten it up with the four screws. The last piece of the puzzle is to put the mounting bracket in place and I need uh, some sort of screw for this. So I took uh, some wing nuts like this and uh, had to file it down a little bit to fit a round headed screw inside of it. Secure it with some glue and tighten it up really firmly. After putting that in place, I have my finished microphone. And of course, every decent microphone deserves its wooden box. And this one I had uh, laser engraved with my Hoborek logo. Which I think looks really nice. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you got some sort of inspiration out of this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Share with friends that might be interested. Please leave comments and hit that like button to help me uh, get higher up in the rankings of YouTube. Bye bye, cheers!